now take you to the broadcast of It's Time with Reverend Nathaniel W. Martin. Here's Reverend Martin. Thank you, Dr. Blackwell. Let me say Happy New Year uh, to everyone. And I hope that this new year will be a beautiful and very uh, fruitful and uh, very uh, prosperous and blessed and the way things are going we we trust it will be a very safe year and that uh, even though we're starting this year out in a tumultuous way we may end it in peace that is my prayer for you right now good morning good afternoon good evening certainly never good night and never ever ever goodbye i hate goodbyes i hate it in 20 I hate even 2021. I thank God to see you again. My name is Reverend Nathaniel Wayne Martin. I'm the pastor of the New Life Institutional Baptist Church. We're located at 8916 South Main, and we're worshiping with our sister church, the Shiloh Missionary Christian Church, whom my very good friend, the Dr. Della F. Holliness, is the lovely and proud pastor they always say when the baptists and the charismatics get together hey there's always going to be a shouting in the camp and truly god is in our midst we had a wonderful uh service on the first sunday of the new year amen and we're riding a high wave of of uh fervor and encouragement and excitement and hopefulness in the new year is despite the presence and the ongoing persistence of the uh, pandemic uh, in our numbers we are all praying that you will all get better that you will all not only survive but that you will thrive uh, in spite of what the wicked one may attempt to cast against you have faith have hope have belief have a mask <laughs> amen keep your distancing do the right thing and god will stand uh with you amen we just pray god's protection to be all around you in a 360 uh area and not only all around but uh top and bottom amen because uh we need we need god's protection like that don't we Amen. The title of this uh, offering, this presentation that we're doing is It's Time, which is more or less a commentary on uh, social justice and so social activism. Uh, we believe in uh, the need for reparations and we need believe in the, the need for reconciliation. And uh, we are trusting uh, God and working very hard to bring about that uh, high state of uh, civilization here to America. As you can see, we need reconciliation. Let us uh, look at our uh, text right quick before we get too far going uh, with all that is happening in our nation and in our world, especially up in Washington, D.C. But this is symptomatic of what is going on all across our uh, a nation at this time. This is our reparation scripture, Deuteronomy chapter uh, 15, picking up the reading at verse number 12. It says, And if thy brother, an Hebrew man or an Hebrew woman, be sold unto thee and serve thee six years, then in the seventh year thou shalt let him or her go free from thee and when thou sendest them away from thee thou shalt not let them go away empty thou shalt furnish him or her liberally out of thy flock and out of thy floor and out of thy winepress of that wherewith the lord thy god hath blessed thee thou excuse me yes thou shalt give unto them that is our reading. It didn't say loan it, didn't say sell it, didn't say rent it or lease it to them. It said give it to them. Not the broke down stuff, but the good stuff. Isn't that right? 
Amen. And so that uh, is where we are. What's what the Bible says? You can tell the contrast between uh, slavery in the scriptures and slavery as it was uh, practiced during the slave trade uh, in uh, the world. Uh, whether you hold the Arabs or the Europeans responsible, uh, they were all complicit. But when the uh, slave trade was uh, practiced here in America, of course, it had a very uh, brutal and a very grim and a very bleak and dismal and vicious and cruel and brutal face added unto it because of the total dehumanization of the people who uh, had been kidnapped from their homelands, from their, uh, their, their, their safe homes, from their safe territories, and uh, had been sold to the uh, European uh, slave traders, whether well, you're talking about Angola or Ivory Coast or Mozambique uh, or any uh, or Senegal, uh, Dahomey, uh, Benin, or any of the uh, I, uh, excuse me uh, countries com countries uh, that engaged in uh, the slave trade, uh, the slavery practice there was quantita qualitatively and quantitatively far different from the slavery as it was practiced in the 13 colonies, which was far more uh, brutal as I described uh, uh, earlier. And so here we are in 2021, still talking about the vestiges of slavery because believe it or not, the vestiges the legacy, the imprint, the effects, uh, the relics, the artifacts of uh, that viciousness is yet in the DNA of this nation and this country and indeed of he who talks to you right now. Uh, even though we have come uh, a, a great way as far as our treatment, uh, and the quality of life that we're allowed to live is far better from that of our slave uh, mothers and fathers and foreparents. Yet we still feel the bitter sting of the vestiges of slavery. Uh, Abraham Lincoln told the truth uh, when he talked about the fact that that was going to be a vicious racism uh, between the Negro and the white folks. He was very honest about it. He didn't think that uh, we would be able to overcome it and uh, throw it off and uh, get rid of it. And I fear as I, I get older, because I'm, I'm 74 years of age as I talk with you, but the Lord has showed us that until that, that, that uh, offense, until that wounding is is confronted not just by me uh among those who have the social political value of being called black but more especially among those who have the socio-political value of being called uh white those who have uh had and enjoyed and benefited and been advantaged by uh the privilege privileges that were accorded to them and uh, uh, from as a result of uh, that vicious uh, cycle and institution, peculiar institution, that uh, we call, the, excuse me, the Constitution called inviolate help, people, excuse me, persons held to labor or involuntary servitude is the way it is described in the uh, Constitution. But until there is a reckoning and a facing and a confronting and an apologizing and an attempt to make right according to the scripture, then the United States will never be what it was intended uh, or what it hoped to be. We, we, we as uh, Donnie Hathaway said in that sad song, uh, your image of me is what I hope to be. 
And we, we are only an image. We have yet to uh, arrive at the fullness of uh, what we uh, have professed. We are mostly, we now speaking uh, of the country as an entire uh, uh, complement of its citizens, uh, we are all found what? Liars. And we are found hypocrites. And uh, because we profess uh, justice for all, but we don't practice. And uh, most of the time, we don't even believe in uh, uh, justice for all in, in this country. Uh, we, we put the lie to the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, one nation under God. We've never been one nation under God. We are not indivisible. We are con one thing Donald Trump has, dis has the uncovered and dis disclosed to the entire world is how divided we are. We are very, very uh, divided. We are divided uh, between the privileged and the underprivileged. Hmm? Between the haves and the haves not. Because between the colonized and the colonizer. Uh, between uh, those who who have the instruments of production, uh, uh, borrowing from the old uh, Marxist doctrine, and those who are what you call redundant or uh, surplus people, which most of us are now in this newly technological age, uh, meaning that they don't need you uh, as they need us uh, to work the fields, to farm the cotton, to work the mines, uh, to build the railroads, to build the buildings. Uh, they don't need us for that anymore. And so we are now what, what they have in South Africa called surplus people. We just uh, another copy of another copy of another copy of another person that is already doing the same thing. And uh, that is going to continue to uh, haunt this great nation until uh, the powers that be uh, relinquish their hold on the treasury uh, relinquish their privileges and, and as uh, we know from uh, Frederick Douglass uh, power never relinquished anything voluntarily uh, freedom is not going to be given voluntarily it has to be demanded uh, by the oppressed uh, I'm sure all of you have seen the scenes of the uh, riot of, of the coup attempt there in uh, Washington uh, D.C. that was attempted uh, on the 6th of this month in this brand new year as though the people felt by taking over uh, the uh, the uh, Senate building and taking over the, uh, the Congress that they could uh, intimidate those people in there, just like they intimidated uh, the people who they got to stop the count in uh, Florida back in 2000 that ushered in the era of G.W. Bush. But that didn't happen this time. They weren't, they weren't successful. Yes, they were aided and abetted by the police, the Capitol Police, and all other types of police. Uh, even see where there was a... a uh, an officer, Jarrell Snyder, who was an ex-Oakland police officer, who was there with the rioters, there with those who came over the fence and came in the doors of the chambers. And, of course, they never could have gotten that far, that easily, that successfully, without the complicity of people within the ground. What are you saying, Reverend Martin? Well, what I'm saying is that there was a fifth column that was aiding them, and that fifth column was in and among the police uh, agencies that uh, were charged with the responsibility to uh, protect the city of Washington, D.C., to protect the, uh, the, uh, the uh, Congress people, the politicians, and everybody else. And they completely dropped the ball. But they... Uh, when you try to say, well, they were overwhelmed. No, they were not overwhelmed. Please, don't be that naive. You, the police had been very much present uh, and very effective all the year long uh, in all the other demonstrations that had come to Washington, D.C. Uh, they 
turned out in force for Black Lives Matter marches, uh, protesting the killing of George Floyd. Uh, they turned out and protected every building. The, you look at the steps. You go back and check the videos from last year when uh, they not only they protected the property, they were actually out there uh, proactively uh, uh, assaulting and 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 uh, battering and violating the civil rights of the marches uh, when it was a people of a different hue, but. When the people who look like America, when the people whom the country was founded and established for, when they came and they had already broadcast, they had already announced for weeks and for days, uh, and Donald Trump was the principal instigator, and he had invited them and, and encouraged them uh, to come to Washington, D.C., come to the Capitol. We're going to walk to the Capitol. You can see the videos of him saying those very words and then looking at his uh, tweets prior to the uh, event after he had lost the election uh, in his bid, his desperate attempt to hold on to power. He encouraged all this great mass of people uh, to come from where all over the United States, especially from the Confederate States, and to come to Washington and to help him to stay in power. Why, if you look at some of the uh, uh, cell phone videos that uh, Jared Kushner and uh, what is her name? Uh, the other Trump, uh, with Ivanka, Melania. Down there in the bunker, why, you will see the truth all by yourself. You don't have to uh, take my word for it. Just look at it. The police were complicit. They were not overwhelmed. They opened the gates. They opened the doors. They showed them where to come in and how to get to the chambers. Uh, as some of the uh, uh, senators and uh, Congress people were saying, why, we thought this was a very safe building. Uh, we thought this was a very secure structure, and it was supposed to be. And no longer times it would have been. But when the people who were uh, guarding you uh, have betrayed you, what do you expect? So that is why, in a saving face mode, uh, Speaker of the House uh, Pelosi uh, had the Sergeant of Arms of the... Uh, Senate and a sergeant of arms of uh, the House of Representatives. What? Fired. Why? Because you didn't do your job. You didn't protect us. People all up on her chair. All up on her chair with a dead foot on her desk. You know that white woman ain't putting up with that. And so uh, that was, uh, that's just the tip of the iceberg to the complicity of the police powers to aid and abet in the overthrow and in the rebellion and in the riot uh, there in, in Washington, D.C. Yes, no, those people could not have come wherever they come from, come into that property, over that property, into those buildings, into those chambers, and then when they had got through, come back out and go back and nobody arrested? Come on now and get back on those buses and trucks and uh, however conveyances that they use to get there and just vanish back to their particular uh, homes and and locations. And now in order to uh, save face, of course, you got the FBI, you got the, the CIA, you got the uh, local police authorities from poor uh, uh, um, the mayor of uh, Washington, D.C., I think the last name is Bowser. And uh, they made her look like a fool uh, because she had asked for the uh, National Guard to come in advance before the, 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 the six got there. She had already called 24 hours in advance. But this is what happened. She does not have the power to summon the National Guard. It has to go through the Department of the Defense. And who, how, who controls the Department of Defense? Why? Yours truly, the, the, the president, the current incumbent of the White House, Donald J. Trump. 
And so his minions, his bureaucrats, uh, quickly uh, sidestep or, 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 or put her or request uh, in the hopper, as it were. And it, it, it wasn't until things had gotten so bad on the 6th that uh, Mike Pence uh, himself, who was, who was the vice president, uh, authorized the National Guard to come in. Donald Trump says he did it, but he didn't do it. He, he, was, he was hunkered down in the bunker watching what was happening, uh, hoping for the best that this, this uh, invasion, uh, this riot, this, this insurrection, this coup, would overthrow the duly elected uh, heads of the government of the United States of America. And oh, how does that look overseas? Where, when the people don't like the results of a democratic election and they seek to overthrow the results of that election because they don't like the outcome? Hmm? Well, because you got uh, Trump knows he's no longer going to be in that seat. It's going to be a one term and out uh, president, just like uh, George Herbert uh, Bush, uh, and, and he was furious. Yes, he was furious. Uh, it hurt his ego. Uh, he was a, he's a loser. He's always telling, he's been fired. He's always telling the other folk, you're fired now. Donald Trump, you're fired. Donald Trump, you are a loser. Why, you think he want to hear that ringing in his ear? Well, he was trying to hold on to power at all costs. But the people knew that was his character, that was his makeup, before he was ever elected, you know. Uh, it just shows you that uh, this nation, for all of its uh, uh, vaunted uh, 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 protestation and proclamations of, of, of character and perfection, uh, is still... Uh, 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 just a, a, a banana republic. Uh, yeah, we'll com they'll commit uh, uh, assassination. Uh, John Wilkes Booth was an actor. What did he do? What did that actor do? Well, he killed Abraham Lincoln. Isn't that right? And just because you put an actor in the White House, you ain't doing nothing. <laughs> you ain't doing nothing. Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, you have to watch all of those type of similarities uh, that occur uh, in the body politic, as it were. And so uh, don't be fooled by what you uh, are being told on the news that they didn't, they could never dream that this was going to, they knew this was going to happen. It had, it had been announced. Hmm? It had been published. It was up on their website. It was on their tweets and on their, their uh, Facebook pages. The, anybody that wanted to know what was going to happen, which those Police powers that uh, were were charged with the solemn responsibility of uh, securing the uh, capital of the United States. They certainly uh, they knew, hmm? but when it's a white face, then that white face has privilege, and uh, the the uh, police powers, which are predominantly white, mind you, they look out and they see. Their, they see their people coming. Those are the people that they go uh, yachting and hunting and, and golfing and to church with. No, they're not going to attack those people. And uh, so, yes, yes, it was an aid and abetting situation. They aided and abetted the police powers in Washington, D.C., aided and abetted uh, the almost coup uh the overthrow of the United States uh, government. They tried to overthrow the results of an election. And uh, not only was it just those people that were on the outside, but you got Ted Cruz, uh, Lindsey Graham, you got Hawley, you got all those 13 or 14 senators or congresspersons uh, that signed that uh, petition to overthrow or uh, refuse to accept or uh, uh, file the objection to uh, the the electoral college, and see now they they're getting bit on the butt by the same electoral college that they authorized during slavery during that constitutional contradiction way back yonder. See, events started way back in the past are now still having current and present effect. When I was in school, they called that a future perfect. <laughs> it did something way back here, and it's still biting you on the butt when you get up. 
you way back there and something still biting you on the butt when you get up here. That's what's happening. And that uh, is what is going to continue uh, to happen until this rec nation reckons. Uh, to give him a sign, say, I got five minutes uh, to wrap this up. And so uh, please don't be uh, deceived by all means. Huh? You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Please don't uh, uh, drink Kool-Aid or go to sleep. Uh, the police are as complicit as the people, the, the non-police. They are as complicit as the rioters. And uh, those uh, politicians whose, whose names that were there on that list with uh, Ted Cruz, they should all be brought up on charges because you can bet that they were there to intimidate those uh, uh, electors there uh, in in the uh, uh, Senate or in the uh, uh, House of Representatives, wherever they were doing uh, the counting. Uh, because as all of this mob is creating all of this pressure and ruckus from the outside, and that noise is coming inside, why well, those those folks have are not used to getting down. Uh, uh, the I'm talking about the senators and Congress people. You know, with their little knit stockings and all of that. They're not used to getting down on the floor <laughs> like you and me. Huh? They're used to it. Now, and uh, Ted Cruz and that crowd could use that uh, that uh, extortion. That's what it was. It was extortion. They would use that power and say, all right, if you want, you better let us have our way. Or these people are coming here and, and, and commit uh, mayhem. They are just as complicit. Don't let them put on that innocent face. They knew this was going to happen. They planned it. They diagrammed it. They, ha they knew how to get those people in there and get them out. And now, a couple of days later, here we are on the 8th, and uh, the uh, FBI is asking us to uh, to look at the pictures and see, do we recognize? Hell, we recognize Donald Trump. The, the FBI should recognize Donald Trump. You don't need to come out here and ask me, do I recognize any of the instigators of of the of the uh, the riot? You got you know you don't know Donald Trump when you see him. You don't hear him. You know, and so all of these things uh, demonstrate to you that you cannot put your faith in man. Because man will let you down. Put your faith in God. Because there may be a traitor uh, in the police department. The police are going to work with their people because those people look like them. The police will always be a fifth column to any insurrection movement in the United States uh, that's brought up uh, against that, uh, the, uh, the system of government uh, that we have. They will either stand around or stand back or fall back and let things play out. Don't fool yourself. As we wrap up, people are dying all across this nation. We got to pray and pray mightily. Uh, I want to ask you to offer prayers for Reverend Luther Keith's wife. I was just informed, I didn't get her first name, but that she passed the day after uh, Christmas. She's the wife of... Uh, Reverend Luther Keith, who is the pastor of Reverend Blackwell, they've been friends almost 100 years, they're so old, and she has transitioned, and uh, we ask your prayers, uh, look at all our doctors and nurses, well, we don't have that many doctors and nurses, and now they're reach, reaching the point of what, burnout, they've been at this too long, they started in February or March, they're still at it, it ain't getting no better, it's getting worse, you and I have got to address ourselves to prayer. We've got to get our brothers and sisters to agree with us, to come to pray, prayer and put on those masks and, and to, to, to separate, to isolate, and keep on praying. Uh, go to your churches. Please go to your churches and pray and continue to pray. As I said last year, I say this year, if you're working on one of them thankless jobs, uh, where they don't give you no good comp time, they don't want you to have overtime, uh, they don't want you to no, have no uh, permanent time, they don't put you on permanent, they'll tell you they don't want 
to pay you. And if people don't want to pay you, what you need to do is don't work for them. God bless you. Let's do this in the new year. Thank you, Doc. We're out of here. Ask the question, Lord, why, why so much?